Hi, everybody. This is Zen Honeycutt of Moms Across America, and I'm here with Debbie Friedman of Moms Advocating Sustainability. Hi, Debbie. Hi. Awesome. You have an important announcement today. First of all, you worked with you have worked with many groups on a very important uh, legal issue. Can you first talk about the groups? Say a little bit. Say a little bit about yourself and about these groups that you're working with. Sure. So um, I am a founder of Moms Advocating Sustainability. We're a grassroots nonprofit and we work to reduce the amount of toxins that children are exposed to in their homes, schools, and play areas. And uh, we began this work in about um, 2008. And we started that work because um, of an aerial spraying program by the state of California where they were going to aerially spray pesticides all across the state for a number of years, several times a month, um, and nobody could, could stop them. And, and that's how we, we began. Um, and, and we've worked collaboratively over the years with a lot of organizations to achieve um, the goal that we, we just did. But it's been about a 12 year long process. 12 years. Wow. Okay. And what groups have you, were, were you working with recently on this, uh, this exciting win? Well, our sister organization is, I call them a sister organization because they're another grassroots group, California Environmental Health Initiative. Um, Nan Wishner is, is one of the board members there and somebody who we really owe a debt of gratitude to all of us in California um, for her incredible hard work and focus. Um, so Nan's group at California Environmental Health Initiative and her partners there has been our, our steady partner all, all along the way. The coalition uh, of groups that we've formed though to really do this legal fight that we're talking about today include Environmental Working Group, Center for Biological Diversity, Pesticide Action Network, Beyond Pesticides, um, the City of Berkeley, and a, a number of, of other coalition members who worked side by side with us as, as plaintiffs, Center for Food Safety. Um, right, wonderful. Well, a lot of wonderful groups are so glad um, that you all worked together and, and supported this great initiative. So I am going to share the screen share now. One second. Hang on a second. It's actually not this one that I want to share first. So this is your press release. Can you talk us through this? What happened? Sure. So just to back up a little bit, what I mentioned to you, the light brown apple moth spraying uh, from ways back. The, the light brown apple moth is, is a, a, a invasive pest is the terminology that they use at the state level um, that can cause some crop damage. It's normally managed um, in other countries like New Zealand, um, without aerial spraying, you know, farmers manage it on their farms. So when we first worked together to uh, stop that spraying, which was the first time that groups had come together to stop a massive aerial spray program like this, um, the state of California, I think, was take, they were taken by surprise. Uh, they never thought we would stop them. And um, their lesson was, hmm, how do we devise a, a plan that uh, prevents um, the public from stopping us from spraying in the future. So they came up with this plan, which the technical word is a pro programmatic environmental impact um, report, which is legalese for a, a high level uh, legal document that the agency, and the agency is the California Department of Food and Ag, approves itself, which gave its blank check full authority to spray a litany of pesticides, 79 pesticides, which they had in as, as an attachment, um, anywhere, anytime, all across the state, and nobody could stop them. That included organic farms, schools, um, and homes and yards. And, and, this, and this passed when? What year? So they approved this two or three years ago. I yeah, I, I remember when that was. It was in the ballot. It was uh, what they basically were doing was a preemptive type of thing, but like you're saying, where they want to be able to stop activists from stopping them from spraying. So they pass a law saying we can spray willy nilly wherever they want, whenever they want. And about a year afterwards, two guys in basically in hazmat suits or some type of masks and suits come into my backyard and they say, we're spraying your citrus tree 
for, you know, some type of pest. And I was like, I don't want that. And they're like, well, sorry, it's a state law. We, you know, we need to do that. So I ended up um, letting my citrus tree die, which was very unfortunate. It was like $50. My mother gave it to me for my birthday. I was hoping to feed my kids for years from it, you know, with oranges from my backyard. And we just let it die because they were toxic chemicals on it. So that's the law that you, your groups stopped. So right? it, yes, uh, it wasn't a ballot initiative. It's, um, mm -hmm. it's part of the California Environmental Quality Act. And it's just, it's, it's something that they drafted themselves, they being the state agency, the state of California's food and ag agency. They created this report. They approved it themselves on Christmas Eve. Um, I remember that Christmas Eve really well because you have a short time to oppose it. So it gave us very little time to organize a coalition, get attorneys who would, you know, work with us pro bono to stop it. But yes, that is exactly what they did as soon as it was, as they approved it, um, even though we filed an opposition, we you know organized coalition got attorneys to do it pro bono and, and filed an opposition. They still were able to continue spraying people's yards, and they reported during the, one of the hearings that they've done a, over a thousand treatments, uh, including what you were talking about, um, going into people's yards and spraying and getting the sheriff um, to to come hold people uh, to threaten people if if they wouldn't uh, agree to be sprayed or like what you did, I guess let your the tree dog. Right, right. In many cases, they sprayed people's yards where pets were, barbecues, where children's play, um, and you couldn't stop them. Yeah. So, so they had this basically it was like a dictatorship over chemicals. They they could just do whatever they wanted wherever. And so your groups came in and you worked for the past what year or two? Yeah, it's been a, it's been at least a, about a year and a half to two years since we have been. Uh, working on this actual lawsuit. But even before that, we spent years going to Sacramento, meeting with the CDFA, California, California Department of Food and Agriculture, Karen Ross, who's the head of the CDFA, with other people within the department. We took scientists with us, we took doctors with us. We met with the, a senior advisor to um, the governor to try to tell them that if they did this PEIR, this, this law, that first of all, we would sue them. Second of all, it was illegal, you know, and we, we implored upon them to just rethink the way they were managing pests in our state so that they wouldn't spend the millions of dollars they spent doing this program. We would not have to spend our time and precious resources fighting them but they went ahead with it anyway. And then we, so that was several years even prior to the approval of this document and then our, our legal fight. So we've been, like I said, this has been a multi-year battle. Yes. And I'd like to point out the quote here. I'm just going to read it for you. Um, you said in here, the court rejected the agency's blank check to spray people's yards, exposing children and pets to a range of pesticides that can cause serious long-term problems, including cancer, asthma, and IQ loss, said De Debbie Friedman, founder of Moms Advocating S Sustainability. If only the $4.5 million in, uh, in taxpayer dollars used to develop this outdated program had been spent to develop a modern sustainable approach that does not rely on toxic chemicals. Just imagine what progress we could have made towards a healthier environment, environment for everyone. And that's exactly right. I just love that point. And, and I love that you brought up money because it's all about money to them. That, that's, you know, yeah. that it's just comes down to money with everybody. So um, yeah, let's look at how that money could have better been spent or in the future, how it could be better spent. I mean, I know for instance, that um, the areas of the UK and Europe have been, have been managing bugs, you know, insects and mosquitoes with bats for hundreds of years. And one bat for free can eat like a thousand mosquitoes in one night. So putting up some bat houses, for instance, just for pests alone, um, or putting up solar pest uh, um, traps like they do in China around their crops. There are a lot of other type of innovative ways that you can manage pests um, and weeds, obviously, as well. There's, we have a, a document now called 10 Alternatives to Roundup on our website, momsacrossamerica.org. So there are a lot of alternatives now, and that money very well could be spent in, in, a, in a better way to do that. So, okay, and then we, we, you, you touch upon here um, 
some of the particularly harmful chemicals. And um, let's see, the Center for the Environmental uh, Center for Biological Diversity said now California must ensure these pesticides aren't harming our water supplies and imperiled species like salmon, said Jonathan Evans. This ruling affirms that people should have a voice in pesticide use in their neighborhoods. So um, right on, so glad that um, you had so many people working on it. Here's the groups down here that worked together on this and uh, the law group. Very glad to see this. The judge has told the state that harmful pesticides simply cannot be sprayed indiscriminately without robust considerations of impacts on people, animals, and water, said Bill Alliard, uh, California Director of Government Affairs for the Environmental Working Group. This ruling also affirms that Californians have the right to know about pesticides being sprayed around them and the ability to challenge spraying that endangers public health and natural resources. Awesome. So now I'm just going to show a quick screen so people can see. This is just one of the 79 chemicals that they could spray willy-nilly wherever they wanted, whenever they wanted. And, and to be clear, this is, this is the, um, the, what's being sprayed is the California Department of Food and Ag, right? That's so who, that who's, <coughs> right. So just to be who, clear, <coughs> this doesn't stop in this residential people, you know, from spraying on their own property. It doesn't stop farmers. It stops the spraying by our Department of Food and Agriculture. California. Yes, so the Department of Food and Agriculture sprays to prevent pests. You mentioned, or Nan mentioned to me that they have traps out when they uh, detect a certain pest, then they can go and just spray that whole, say, you know, by a waterway or something. And, right. and if your backyard happens to be within that aerial spraying, too bad. If your pets happen to be there, if your kids happen to be there, your organic garden, uh, too bad. So it all gets sprayed. And now that is, has to stop after, um, 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 after even last even, week. Even organic farms could lose their certification because yeah. they also were, you know, it could be sprayed or, you know, there could be drift issues and, and they might have lost their certification. So think of the economic implications of this. Yeah, the economic implications are huge. The health implications are huge. And, and this is, so this is, this is a chart I just want to show everybody of one of the chemicals and the pounds that are used per year, it, per, per county, just of glyphosate. And I want to point out, though, that this is not um, by the agriculture department. These are for weeds in the cities on sidewalks and streets and parks and playgrounds, right? This is not the agriculture. Uh, these are not farmers, and this is not residential use. So this is only one small part of the chemicals that are being sprayed. And you can see some areas like Fresno and Kern County have over a million and a half pounds being used just in, just in that's just in 2015 alone, this, this last category right here. Um, it's really quite high. And then there's other counties like, Mar are you in Marin County? Or other counties like Marin County that are about the same size as my county, which is Orange County right here. You can see it here in orange. Um, they're about the same size, but look at this dramatic difference of usage. And I broke it down. It's in Orange County, we use 103 pounds, or we did in 2015, per square mile just of glyphosate. And Marin County, which is only 100 square miles smaller, uh, used, used 2,500 pounds. So that's 0.33 pounds per square miles, whereas Orange County used 103 pounds per square mile. I mean, that's 312 times more. So I can say something about Marin County. That's a, yes, please. When, when, uh, when uh, as part of our work at Moms Advocating Sustainability, we did uh, work very hard to shift our county agricultural, um, our, our county spraying of pesticides and herbicides. And so what we did is we uh, revamped their whole integrated pest management laws and the goal at that point when when we did that i think that was back in 2008 also um we asked them to slowly reduce their use of glyphosate down to zero they kind of laughed at me back then because there wasn't a lot of information at that point i knew a lot about endocrine disruptors and there was some early uh information but we forced them <laughs> to do a slow um, reduction in the use of glyphosate at the county level and all pesticides. Um, but glyphosate was the hardest one for them to let go of. 
And it just happened that they took glyphosate off the allowed list at the county level. So they are no longer going to be using glyphosate in Marin County at the county level. And that was thanks to our hard work at, you know, with Mamas and a lot of other great groups. And Rika Gopinath, who you know, has been the chair of the Integrated Pest Management Commission. Um, one of our doctors on our advisory board, Mirto Ash, has been the doctor on that commission. So we have stayed on them. So all I can say to all you moms, you have so much power, but stick with it. Whatever, you, just stick with it. We are, this is a long process, but we are down to zero. And I will tell you, when I used to come to them and meet with our supervisors one after another after another, over and over, and go to all their hearings, they would sort of laugh and be like, right. And, but we're down to zero now. They don't laugh anymore. It, it works. And that is part of success. I think the definition of, of success is not to be stopped, to be unstoppable, to keep going, even when we have, um, you know, losses, you know, right. like the, right. um, Get back up. Yeah. the listing of glyphosate is still on the Prop 65 California carcinogen list, but the judge ruled temporarily put a prelim pre preliminary injunction saying that the manufacturers will not have to label as a, a cancer warning label. So it doesn't mean it's over, but it just doesn't look good for that. Um, but we can't give up. We have to keep going. And the fact is, is that people are learning from the hard work from people like you, that these chemicals that are being sprayed just, you know, from planes or, you know, by hand or where, that there's an impact to them, that they're, they're not as safe as they are claimed to be. And one of those reasons people should know if you're watching this for the first time is because the EPA does not require final formulation testing with blood analysis, you know, long-term animal studies on the final formulation. They just require one declared active chemical ingredient to be tested. And um, the manufacturers can choose the most innocuous, you know, least toxic chemical to be the one that's tested and uh, presented uh, for those safety studies. So they, they approve these chemicals based on one ingredient in the product, not on the final formulation. That doesn't make any sense at all. So nobody, not your city parks and rec person, not your city councilman, not your uh, landscapers, not your uh, department of pesticide regulation, if you have one in your state, no one can say, not the EPA, and not even, even a policeman or a helicopter sprayer or anybody can say that those chemicals are safe because there has been, not been any long-term final formulation um, studies on animals with blood analysis. Well, and, so, the, and the tests they rely on are tests that are done by the pesticide companies themselves. So, you know. Yes, yeah. And the tests they rely on are industry-funded studies. So, yeah, they're uh, usually skewed towards their... They're what they want to have done. So well, let's talk about this a little bit. Debbie, you wanted to share, there's a new bill that Iowa Rep aims to undercut state art or uh, agriculture regulations. So like, this is you... one of the most important things for us to be um, aware of right now. And the word is called preemption. And what preemption means is, you know, we're getting things done at the county level, at the city level, at the state level, because activism, activism frankly, is easier at the, these levels um, for us to do. And so what the chemical industry is doing and pesticide industry is they are going to the federal level and passing laws that will preempt or void all of these local health and safety laws that we're passing here. So this new bill, I just uh, learned about this today. What's it called? If you, let's see, who is the, oh, they're calling it the Protect Interstate Commerce Act. Let's highlight that. Oh, right here. Protect Interstate Commerce Act. That's what they're calling it right here. Yeah. So it was introduced by Representative Steve King, who's yep. an Iowa Republican. And so it would void what we just did in California. It would void um, all the local and state work that we're doing here. It, and um, also would be incredibly, incredibly harmful to organic farmers because there's a lot of laws already that are being passed like with the dicamba drift um, right and it would void things like what the arkansas governor did by um, banning dicamba correct that's what i mean yes so and yeah, yeah and the so, the initiative that we put out in december 50 states asked governors to ban glyphosate we have uh, moms across america supporters from every state asking their governors to ban glyphosate to follow in the footsteps of what the governor from arkansas did with dicamba and to stop allowing a um, 
cancer causing, liver disease causing, endocrine disruptor neurotoxin to be sprayed in our food? Wouldn't that be a good idea, right? But so this, this Protect Interstate Commerce Act would void that. It would, or at least make everything subject to challenge. You know, you could use this federal law if it passes to challenge all of these laws. And it would be hard to argue against it. Um, so I would ask everybody out there to write and call and go meet with your local representatives in Congress and make sure they do whatever it takes to oppose this law. And, and it's going through the Ag Committee first, it looks like, um, which is you know an easy place for them to move it through. Um, but everybody needs to step up on this. This would have monumental impacts. Great. Well, well, thank you for bringing this to our attention. We really appreciate it. Uh, we, we also have uh, this regulations for glyphosate. They are now accepting uh, comments, draft for human health or ecological risk assessment for several pesticides, including glyphosate. Um, I'll be posting this on our website as well. They, the EPA is accepting comments um, regarding glyphosate and several other um, pesticides. So if they, if they renew the license for glyphosate, which they probably will, but if, if they do, it, it's again going to be very, very harmful for uh, the American public and for beyond. And we want, um, we want to come out in full force and have a lot of people saying we do not want this renewed. We don't want any toxic chemicals used in our community, just like Debbie and, and all the great groups that you just did, you stood up and you spoke up repeatedly over and over and over again. I'm sure very nicely sometimes too, and very professionally. And you really just spoke to from your heart. I could just imagine knowing the kind of person you are uh, from your heart and, and spoke personally with them, made personal con connections and, um, and did not give up. And so thank you very much for your efforts and let's all make sure that we do speak to our, our, um, our congressmen and representatives again about this act to make sure that it doesn't go away. It is called again the Protect Interstate Commerce Act introduced by Representative Stephen King from Iowa. Okay, please talk to them and say you do not want them to support this um, act because it will uh, get rid of all the different states rights and communities rights to um, not to choose not to use certain pesticides and chemicals, right? Yep. But it'll, it'll eliminate our choice. Okay, great. Anything else that you want to say before we go? Uh, thanks for all the work you do. And, uh, and I can't even tell you, you know, it takes all of us. We're, it's, it's, uh, it's up to us, nobody else. Yeah. And run. We want, we need more people who do the work with, that we do um, in power, you know, at the local level, state level, and federal level. So I hope uh, more people who do this kind of work and understand the um, implications to our food supply and to our children will step up and, and get into power because we need you. Run for office. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you run for office and get in there and take action and say, uh, say what needs to happen. Well, make it happen. What needs to happen, you know, protect our, our citizens, protect our babies and our children and our water and our wildlife. And, and make it happen. You don't have to have previous experience. There's thousands now of women, especially, that are running for office that do not have previous experience and you absolutely can do that. Great. Well, thank you very much, Debbie. Is there any website that you want to refer anybody to or and anything else you want to mention? Uh, moms advocating, yeah, momsadvocatingsustainability.org. Uh, there's a toolkit there for people who want to work with uh, their communities locally to reduce the amount of pesticides that their children are exposed to. Um, at the Marin County level, you we do have the integrated pest management ordinance that I spoke about online there. It's a fabulous model ordinance. So anybody out there, if, if uh, people in your local government say we can't, actually you can, we're doing it here. So if you go to um, the Marin County website and you search for the integrated pest management ordinance and policy, um, everything uh, should be there. And, and uh, please, yeah, go to those two sites. Great. And just so you can do it, everyone, you can do it. Do not give up and go and speak with your heart and, and be in contact with your regulatory officials and sue if you have to, right? Yes. Yes. Legal okay. Action. 
often require. Thanks, Anne. Thank you very much, Debbie.